The Ministry of Intercession Intercessory Prayer Before God, on behalf of others You, yourselves like living stones are being built up as a spiritual house, to be a holy priesthood, to offer spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. 1 Peter chapter 2 verse 5, English Standard Version But ye shall be named the priests of the Lord, men shall call you the ministers of our God, ye shall eat the riches of the Gentiles, and in their glory shall ye boast yourselves. Isaiah chapter 61 and the verses 6. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me, because the Lord has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor, he has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and the opening of the prison to those who are bound, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. Isaiah 61, verses 1 to 2a. These are the words of Jesus in Isaiah. As the fruit of his work all redeemed ones are priests, fellow partakers with him of his anointing with the Spirit as high priest. This anointing is like the precious ointment upon the beard of Aaron, that went down to the skirts of his garments. Like every son of Aaron. So every member of Jesus' body has a right to the priesthood. But not everyone exercises it, many are still entirely ignorant of it. And yet it is the highest privilege of a child of God, the mark of greatest nearness and likeness to him, whoever liveth to pray. Do you doubt if this really be so? Think of what constitutes priesthood. There is, first, the work of the priesthood. This has two sides, one Godward, the other manward. Every priest is ordained for men in things pertaining to God. As Hebrews chapter 5 verse 1 tells us that, for every high priest chosen from among men is appointed to act on behalf of men in relation to God to offer gifts and sacrifices for sins or as it is said by Moses the Lord separated the tribe of Levi to bear the ark of the covenant of the Lord to stand before the Lord to minister unto him and to bless in his name, unto this day. Then the priests, the sons of Levi, shall come forward, for the Lord your God has chosen them to minister to him and to bless in the name of the Lord, and by their word every dispute and every assault shall be settled. They shall teach Jacob your rules and Israel your law, they shall put incense before you and hold burnt offerings on your altar. True instruction was in his mouth and no wrong was found on his lips. He walked with me in peace and uprightness, and he turned many from iniquity, says by God about a priest whom he acknowledges as his messenger. The Lord separated the tribe of Levi to stand before the Lord to minister unto him, and to bless his name. On the one hand, the priest had the power to draw nigh to God, to dwell with him in his house, and to present before him the blood of the sacrifice or the burning incense. This work he did not do, however, on his own behalf, but for the sake of the people whose representative he was. This is the other side of his work. He received from the people their sacrifices, presented them before God, and then came out to bless in his name, to give the assurance of his favor and to teach them his law. A priest is thus a man who does not at all live for himself. 
he lives with God and for God. His work is as God's servant to care for his house, his honor, and his worship, to make known to men his love and his will. He lives with men and for men. The high priest has his own weaknesses. So he is able to be gentle with those who do wrong out of ignorance. His works are, to find out their sins and need, and to bring it before God, to offer sacrifice and incense, in their names, to obtain forgiveness and blessing for them, and then to come out, and bless them in his name. This is the high calling of every believer. Such honor have all his saints. They have been redeemed with the one purpose to be in the midst of the perishing millions around them, God's priests, who in conformity to Jesus, the great high priest, are to be the ministers and stewards of the grace of God to all around them. And then there is the walk of the priesthood, in harmony with its work. As God is holy, so the priest was to be especially holy. This means not only separated from everything unclean, but holy unto God, being set apart and given up to God for his disposal. The separation from the world and setting apart unto God was indicated in many ways. It was seen in the clothing, the holy garments, made after God's own order, marked them as his. It was seen in the command as to their special purity and freedom from all contact from death and defilement, left underscore 11 colon 22. Much that was allowed to an ordinary Israelite was forbidden to them. It was seen in the injunction that the priest must have no bodily defect or blemish, bodily perfection was to be the type of wholeness and holiness in God's service. And it was seen in the arrangement by which the priestly tribes were to have no inheritance with the other tribes. The scripture tells us that the priests the Levites, and all the tribes of Levi, shall have no part nor inheritance with Israel, they shall eat the offerings of the Lord made by fire, and his inheritance. Therefore, shall they have no inheritance among their brethren, the Lord is their inheritance, as he hath said unto them. All this is the emblem of what the character of the New Testament priest is to be. Our priestly power with God depends on our personal life and walk. We must be of them of whose walk on earth Jesus says, they have not defiled their garments. The undefiled garments refer to the sanctified way of life and such life was found among the few Christians in the local church of Sardis. That's what it meant when the Lord Jesus says, you have a few names even in Sardis which have not defiled their garments, and they shall walk with me in white, for they are worthy. Revelation 3 verse 4 That is what the church is supposed to be. And it will be so as the Lord has the power to do so with his own, that he might present it to himself a glorious church, not having spot, or wrinkle, or any such thing. Ephesians 5 verse 27 The word of God is the instrumental cause as to make it a reality. That the man of God may be perfect or mature, thoroughly furnished to all good works. 2 Timothy 3 verse 17 And now the way to the priesthood. In Aaron God had chosen all his sons to be priests, each of them was a priest by birth. And yet he could not enter upon his work without a special act of ordinance, his consecration. 
Every child of God is priest in light of his birth, his blood relationship to the great high priest, but this is not enough, he will exercise his power only as he accepts and realizes his consecration. Exodus 29 When you ordain one of Aaron's sons as my priest, choose a young bull and two rams that have nothing wrong with them. Then from your finest flour, make three batches of dough without yeast. Shape some of it into larger loaves, some into smaller loaves mixed with olive oil, and the rest into thin wafers brushed with oil. Put all of this bread in a basket, and bring it when you come to sacrifice the three animals to me. Bring Aaron and his sons to the entrance of the sacred tent, and have them wash themselves. Dress Aaron in the priestly shirt, the robe that goes under the sacred vest, the vest itself, the breastpiece, and the sash. Put on his turban with its narrow strip of engraved gold, and then ordain him by pouring olive oil on his head. Next, dress Aaron's sons in their special shirts and caps, and their sashes. Then ordain them, because they and their descendants will always be priests. Lead the bull to the entrance of the sacred tent, where Aaron and his sons will lay their hands on its head. Kill the bull near my altar, in front of the tent. Use a finger to smear some of its blood on each of the four corners of the altar, and pour out the rest of the blood on the ground next to the altar. Hebrews 10. The law of Moses is like a shadow of the good things to come. This shadow is not the good things themselves, because it cannot free people from sin by the sacrifices that are offered year after year. If there were worshippers who already have their sins washed away and their consciences made clear, there would not be any need to go on offering sacrifices. But the blood of bulls and goats cannot take away sins. It only reminds people of their sins from one year to the next. When Christ came into the world, he said to God, Sacrifices and offerings are not what you want, but you have given me my body. No, you are not pleased with animal sacrifices and offerings for sin. Then Christ said, And so, my God, I have come to do what you want, as the scriptures say. The law teaches that offerings and sacrifices must be made because of sin. But why did Christ mention these things and say that God did not want them? Well, it was to do away with offerings and sacrifices and to replace them. That is what he meant by saying to God, I have come to do what you want. So we are made holy because Christ obeyed God and offered himself once for all. The priests do their work each day and they keep on offering sacrifices that can never take away sins. But Christ offered himself as a sacrifice that is good forever. Now he is sitting at God's right side, and he will stay there until his enemies are put under his power. By his one sacrifice, he has forever set free from sin the people he brings to God. The Holy Spirit also speaks of this by telling us that the Lord said, when the time comes, I will make an agreement with them. I will write my laws on their minds and hearts. Then I will forget about their sins and no longer remember their evil deeds. When sins are forgiven, there is no more need to offer sacrifices. My friends, the blood of Jesus gives us courage to enter the most holy place by a new way that leads to life and this way takes us through the curtain that is Christ himself. We have a great high priest who is in charge of God's house, so let's come near to God with pure hearts and a confidence that comes from having faith. Let's keep our hearts pure, our consciences free from evil, and our bodies washed with clean water. We must hold tightly to the hope that we say is ours. After all, we can trust the one who made the agreement with us.
Close till I get up. Time is barely on our side.